at our elementary school's uh, effective in September of 2017. Uh, just this year, our district, I think, very successfully implemented an after school, uh, aftercare program. As of today, we have 286 students who are in this aftercare program. Um, since then, and, and probably since we implemented the aftercare, and probably much before that, I've had parents approach me. I know several board members have asked uh, if we could do a before care program. Uh, I'm happy to say that we're finally prepared to do it. Uh, we have the staff in place to do it, and we have the need for it. So I'm happy that tonight the board has the opportunity to vote on approving this program. I think it'll be really great for those working parents who have to leave. Uh, early in the morning, have no place to, to bring that here. So, uh, hoping the board will vote on that and approve that tonight. Uh, Mr. President, that concludes my report. Okay, thank you, Dr. Rose. That was a this time we move into curriculum instruction. Uh, Ms. Viviana. Thank you, Mr. President. The curriculum instruction committee, upon recommendation of the superintendent of schools and the assistant superintendent, present the following very brief motion to the London Board of Education for approval. Item 1 through 10 deal with approval of specialized programs for the placement of classified students, determination of out of district placements, the approval of payments for related services as per child study team evaluations, the approval of home instruction, determination of related services, the approval of termination of transportation services, and the approval of speech services. Items 11 and 12 approve home instruction services provided by outside agencies. Item 13 approves the team sports schedules for the spring 2017 season. 14 grants approval to the spring weight room hours. 15 amends board action on past C and I reports. 16 grants permission for use of facilities and school activities. 17 approves district field trips. 18 approves training for district staff. 19 authorizes curriculum writing. 20 approves the 21st Century Community Learning Center Summer STEM Academy. 21 approves Title I Lunchtime Tutoring in School 5. 22 approves the administration of the access test for ESL students. 23 authorizes the administration of IB examinations on the dates listed. 24 approves the pre-K kindergarten and city roundup dates. 25 approves edge year courses for 12th grade students. 26 approves the school self-assessment for determining grades under the Anti-Bullying Bill of Rights Act for all listed public schools. Mrs. Bebiano, if I can interrupt you there uh, for that item, uh, we need to do a report on that uh, very briefly and open up a public discussion. Uh, as required by uh, the New Jersey School Assess Assessment for HIV, uh, each of our schools in the district completed a self-assessment. Um, our implementation of the Anti-Bullying Bill of Rights Act. While completing the self-assessment, we learned that our school district has demonstrated strengths in reducing the number of confirmed HIV investigations. Uh, our average score um, on the self-assessment was a 69, which is above the state average. Um, at this time, Mr. President, would you open up for any public comment on that? Yes, anybody wishes to come to the podium, now would be the time. Thank you, Superintendent. Item 27 approves the submission of the 2016 ESEA Accountability Action Plan Assurances for participation rate to the County Superintendent. 28 grants approval to apply for the 21st Century Community Learning Center grant for the 2017-18 school year. 29, 30, 31. Approval for exchange programs to Spain, Italy, and China. Item 32 proclaims the month of February as Black History Month to be recognized and celebrated in the Clinton Public Schools. And item 33 approves the superintendent's determination and actions taken for all reported incidents of harassment, intimidation, and bullying as discussed at the January 5th, 2017 regular meeting. Mr. President, with the curriculum instruction, item 1233, we ask for a second. Okay. Any questions, comments? Roll call. Mrs. Fabiano? Yes. Mrs. Birch? Yes. Mrs. Sudak? Yes. Mr. Marchusi? Yes. Mr. Popoleski? Yes. Mrs. Bellani? Yes. 
Mr. Borat? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Mr. Carlos? Yes, I remember I was staying on uh, number 18. Okay, we'll move into management operations. Uh, Ms. Lebeck? Thank you, uh, Mr. President. The Management Operations Committee, upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, presents the following 35 motions to the Linden Board of Education for approval. The first one is the retire first one is the retirement. Dr. Rupitos. Thank you, Mrs. Zudak. Uh, bittersweet moment to see um, Mary Jane Ritakis is going to retire. Mary Jane's out in the audience tonight. We often see her at our board meetings. She's worked for the uh, Linden Board of Education for 25 years. She started her career in 1991 among a strong core of aides at school number four. Since then, she's worked at schools 10. And she now ends her full-time career with us at school number two. Uh, Mary Jane came to meet with me uh, last week. We had a nice little chat. Uh, and in her letter, she wrote that she will miss working with my students. And it's her presence for and her advocacy of our students, which is really incomparable. Uh, she has served as a mother uh, to children of the attended our school, the role model, and support system for so many as an aide, as a paraprofessional, and as a medical bus aide. Uh, someone also told me that she's a gardener, and it doesn't surprise me, because she has sown so many seeds of goodness for our students. So Mary Jane, you will be absolutely impossible to replace, and I want to thank you uh, for your years of service to our district. Other and various occasions, and um, I too um, have to echo Dr. Odozi's words. Um, we're really going to miss you. Had a wonderful, wonderful time and a long one. Okay, at this time, are you not coming? I love them. I try to make sure. Okay. Number two is to amend uh, board action on uh, board action on past management operations reports as listed. Numbers 3, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, <coughs> 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, and 35 are all appointments. Number 4 is to accept the following resignation of the following staff. Number five is to approve the following transfer of the following staff. Number six are leave of absences. Number seven is to compensate staff listed for sick days upon retirement as per negotiated contract. Number eight is to approve the salaries from the 2017 IDA basic grants as listed. Number nine is to approve the payment of salaries for the 2017 IDEA preschool grant as listed. Number 10 is to amend funding for the staff with Title 1A, Title 2A, and Title 3 to read as follows below. And Mr. President, I move items 1 through 35 and I respectfully ask for a second. Second. Okay. Any questions, comments? Roll call, please. Mrs. Bemiano? Yes. Mrs. George? Yes. Mrs. Sudak? Yes. Mr. Marchuzzi? Yes. Mr. Tabaleski? Yes. Mr. Romani? Yes. Mr. Wolrak? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Oh, okay. Yes. I'm sorry. Um, yes, I accept a thing from item number 21 and item number 6. Yes. All right. Um, we'll move on to support operations. Uh, Mr. Alvarez. The support operations committee upon the company of superintendent of schools and the administrative board secretary present the following motions to Linden Board of Education for approval. Uh, number one, the result of the Board of Education accept the administrative board secretary certification that is, as of December 31st, 2016, no budgetary line item account has encumbrances and payments which in total exceed the amount appropriated by the Board of Education pursuant to NJC 6A23-2411. Be resolved by the Board of Education pursuant to NJC 6A23-2411 and after review of the Board Secretary's monthly financial reports, 
and upon consultation with appropriate district officials to advise that to the best of our knowledge, no major account or fund has been overexpended in violation of NJC 6823-211. And the sufficient funds are available to meet the district's financial obligations for the remainder of the fiscal year. In the prayer for the Secretary's report for the month of December 2016, Number four, authorize the board secretary to give warrants to the salaries for the salary to amend the payroll for the month of January 2017. Number five, authorize the board secretary to give warrants in the amount of specified in favor of the person's name. Six, approve the list of transfers and adjustments for the month of December 2016. Seven, approve the director's report for the month of December 2016. Uh, eight, approve the student activities report for the month of December 2016. And Number nine, and one man for actions on that agenda as follows. So, um, all right, I said the point in amount of eighty thousand dollars from Bill sixty six of the six and seventy three full option sign system, pitch for mechanics and sold middle school. I said the point in the amount of thirty five thousand from Bill sixty six of the first of seventy seventh grade full option sign system kits for mechanics and sold middle schools. I set one to the amount of ten thousand from the Rutgers Current Confucius Institute for the promotion, enhancement, and expansion of our Chinese language program. Thirteen, I set one to the amount of one thousand five hundred from the Continuum USA in support of Linden High High School Process Technology Program. I set one to the amount of eight hundred dollars from the County of Union for the use of district schools for two thousand sixteen voting. I set additional funding in the amount of six hundred thirty nine dollars from the Chapter One and Two for the two thousand sixteen seventeen school year. I set funds from the Panda Arrow LLC Spring from Jersey representing loyalties from the sale of apparel for accessories bearing the limited school of dollars. In turn, I set funds from the amount of $2,000 to $2,000 from Rutgers University to Saturday for district participation in 2015 16 New Jersey Middle School Risk and Protective Factors Survey. In turn, I set funds from the amount of $50 from Howard Fretchner for Superintendent's Scholarship Fund. 19, I set funds from the state of New Jersey probation administration for student reimbursement as follows. 20, I set the, the funds in the amount of $5.40 in compliance with the OPRA request dated April 7, 2016. 21, I set the donation of funding supplies from Rutgers University for school number five to cultivate a student led party initiative. And 22, for the 2015 16, carry over funds of IDEA 2016 17 as follows. 23, I approve the Linden Board of Education sponsored before our school program for students attending school 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, and 10, commencing September of 2017. Parents will pay for the service and it will be managed through the Enterprise Fund. I approve the enrollment of the following students for the remainder of the 2016 17 school year, eligible on a tuition basis under the district policy number 5118. Approving enrollment of the following students for the 2017 18 school year, eligible on a tuition basis under district policy number 15118, pending enrollment figures. In 26, approve the following resolution. Viewing over the limit of board vacation, hereby terminate the lease with Robert E. Sommerfeld, ex executor of the state of Woolwich Reagan, disease, and John Reagan individually, in new business as Date Blue Associates. Set termination to be expected at August 31st, 2017. And the board hereby authorizes the business administrator to work with the board's facilities council to provide a notice of termination as required at least and take such other further steps as necessary in connection with the termination. 27. I put upon resolution the limit of vacation needs to be desirable. And the best measures of the school district to acquire a certain property located on. At 224, 226, 228, and 230 East Town Street in the city of Linden, County Union, New Jersey, also known as lots 29.03, 29.04, 29.05, 29.06, 29.06, .06, currently owned by Goodinex LLC. And due to the need for additional parking spaces for school district employees, the intended use of the property shall be in the creation of a parking lot. Now, therefore, we resolve the board hereby authorizes the purchase of the property from Budenex LLC for a price of $725,000 and no cents. And the board authorizes facilities council to prepare the contract of sale and forward the same to council for Budenex LLC. 
in the board's authorized the superintendent and these administrators to, to work with the board's facility council to take any and all steps necessary to effectuate the purchase of the property, including without limitation, execution of the contract of any riders there to and obtain all local county and state approvals necessary for the purchase of the property for its intended use as a parking lot and that upon new and upon the next LLC approval and execution of the contract sale, the full authorized the board president to execute the contract of sale and any riders there to. Authorized the business administrator, board secretary, to submit the secretary to secretaries and secretary's reports for the period ending ended December 31st, 2016, to the executive union county superintendent of schools. Declare the following the surplus equipment in accordance with the district policy 3260 as follows. In accordance with AJC 6823A-14.1, authorize the business administrator for secretary, for secretary to withdraw $1,025,000 from the capital reserve transfer to the capital projects fund for the purchase of land at numbers 224, 226, 228, 230 Long Street, Lincoln, Jersey, to construct a parking lot for Seoul Middle School on Sane. Approved lease purchase agreement with Apple Inc., Irving, Texas. Uh, master lease agreement for a period of three years in the total amount of $980,422. Approval contract in the amount of $185,410.30 with Nicholson Corporation, Union Beach, New Jersey, for the McManus Middle School Auditorium fixed seating with pricing based on the Educational Service Commission of New Jersey Cooperative Pricing System bid 15-619. Now, this is the report. I'm in. I'm in the board action as past, as past corporation report. Um, use of facilities and no charge as requested by Dr. Robert Tosi, superintendent. Use of facilities and no charge as requested by Y. Horry, principal of Lincoln High School. Use of facilities and no charge as requested by I. Sosa, vice principal director of Seoul Middle School. Use of facilities at no charge requested by E. Pringle, principal of the National School. Use of facilities at no charge requested by R. Molinaro, principal of Seoul Middle School. Use of facilities at no charge requested by A. Perkins, principal number two. Use of facilities at no charge as requested by Anthony Adeline, principal school number four. Use of facilities at no charge as requested by L. Scamardella, principal school number five. Use of facilities at no charge as requested by M. Rodriguez, principal number eight. Use of facilities have no charge as requested by S. Congolese, principal number 10. Use of facilities have no charge as requested by T. Brissett, president, school number 6, PTA. Use of facilities have no charge as requested by D. Hernandez, president, school number 9, PTA. And use of facilities as a service charge as requested by me, by Luna, administrative assistant, New Jersey, Love. Mr. President, we move to support operations 132 in facilities 1 through 14. And respectfully ask for a second. Second. And finance, sorry, items 132. Okay. Questions? Comments? Okay, I have roll calls. Mrs. Betiana? Yes. Mrs. Hirsch? Yes. Mrs. Sudak? Yes. Mr. Marchese? Yes. Mr. Hopalowski? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Walrath? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Mr. Hopalowski? Yes. All right, we're moving on to planning and policy. Mr. Walrath? Upon recommendation of the superintendent, I submit the following 13 policies for approval. The planning um, third, 1330, use of school facilities, updated the definition of smoking to include electronic smoking devices. 3100, budget planning and preparation, added a section on budget adoption and submission, budget hearing, public notification of the budget, and appropriation of funds to be more consistent with the law. 3510, Operation and maintenance of plant, and the last sentence regarding equal bias free access to school facilities. 3515, smoking prohibition, updated the definition of smoking to include electronic devices. 3542.1, local wellness and nutrition, edited the third paragraph to refer to the district goals, added sections committee review, financial assessment, principal activities, record keeping requirements, marketing. 
and ended in last section by the General School District Department. 1120 Board of Education Meetings, revised policy related to public reporting requirements and information on school performance report yearly targets and added section title school report card. 2131 Superintendent added more details related to the evaluation process, added quantitative and or qualitative merit criteria, and added information regarding performance of contractual duties. 2240 Research, Evaluation, and Planning added section title school lead school level planning. Title of section change to planning at the school level. Provide deadline dates and time frames are throughout the section. 4112.2 certification revised to be more in line with statute and code. 4112.4 slash 4212.4 employee health added content on examination for cause. 4112.6 slash 4212.6 Personnel records reconstructed uh, the policy and added content on the record requirements of the chief and J. 5111 admission edited the section titled homeless pupils for the requirements of ESSA. 5118.2 foster care and educational stability. This is a new policy in order to comply with the requirements of ESSA. Mr. President, I respectfully move the 13th planning policy and answer a second. Second. Okay, any questions, comments? I may have a roll call, please. Mrs. Bebiana? Yes. Mrs. Birch? Yes. Mrs. Sudak? Yes. Mr. Marchese? Yes. Mr. Poplas? Yes. Mrs. Bellani? Yes. Mr. Walrath? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Mr. Yes. All right, this time we'll be moving on to reports of the special committees. All right, St. Calhoun, Mr. Poplas? Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the Delegate Assembly met on December 10th at Mercer County College. During the meeting, uh, we received addresses by both Don Webster University and JSBA and uh, Dr. Obama, the Executive Director. Uh, there was a report by a study uh, commissioner recommending some changes uh, in the New Jersey School Board's Rules of Governance, which, which I'll address later. Uh, <coughs> The big things that they emphasized was that the budget, uh, the dues have not raised for the budget in the last eight years. And one of the reasons for that is the fact that they have made uh, tremendous strides in raising money from private uh, donors. Uh, it's, a, it's a group called ELF, Education Leadership Foundation. And so, uh, and Ms. Martucci is attending uh, in March, uh, a weekend, uh, a training that's all paid for by private funds. Um, school boards doesn't use any of that money. Uh, not, not that money comes from school boards. Yeah. Or it do, sorry. Um, attendance in county meetings is up over 70%. Uh, and part of that has to do with the, the programs that involve training. And a lot of those school board members don't get trained. That's the whole well, it's just not you need to School board also pointed out the school board has a tremendous relationship with the United States Army and will continue to work with them to improve achievement. Uh, we have had the Army here uh, and discussed uh, some programs that we might uh, be able to bring into uh, the school that are from, uh, free from the uh, U.S. Army. And it has nothing to do with high school and recruiting. It just has to do with making sure that the kids get the, the uh, training, learning that the Army deems they need uh, for the future. A lot of this stuff is all technical now. And uh, we are looking for those people to work behind the scenes. Uh, there were also, uh, at the uh, recent workshop, uh, and at the end of October, uh, they, there was a big uh, emphasis on bringing students to the workshops and they uh, increased the number of students that were there. Uh, some of you may have seen the uh, uh, STEM pack, which they ran in the month, uh, and they're look, recruiting now to teams back here. Uh, teams uh, actually develop pro uh, products and stuff like that, and they present it like uh, Shark Tank. And two, I believe they chose two groups, uh, and actually on, on there's videos 
of the presentation that I'm on school boards. One well, second. Uh, a new initiative called Future Ready Schools is, uh, is being added to Sustainable uh, New Jersey. Uh, at that point, my, uh, Vice President Jason Jones took over and uh, we took some regular business. Uh, we, New Jersey School Boards voted to change the rules regarding executive board members running uh, for partisan political offices. And, and it just doesn't go with local, it just deals with people that are executive board members of New Jersey School Boards. And what it does is it forces them to resign their positions if they're running in a partisan election. And they're still a board member in a law school, but not executive board members. Um, in addition, there was, a, there was an addition of policy language regarding the change, uh, changing the burden of proof for changes in special ed students' IEPs. Uh, there was a, a quite a bit of discussion, they wanted the discussion to go on even longer, uh, but fortunately, we, they need two thirds to extend the discussion and we defeated it. Uh, it. It would seem that it was going to be a close vote. Uh, basically, what this does is, as a parent, if I object to the IEP or I want my child's IEP changed from what the school recommended, the way it goes now, the school has to defend their position. Uh, I don't have to do anything as a parent. And what this is saying is, you know, as a parent, if you think you should change, you need to tell us why you should change. You know, because how, how you defend something you already doing. It's very difficult. So, as a result, it passed uh, with a 78% yes vote. It seemed like it was going to be a lot closer, but it carried uh, quite handily. Uh, I noticed we've seen four board members uh, on December 6th. And there's also been a second notice regarding the resolution's cutoff date. Uh, so if you plan on proposing a resolution to change the school boards, uh, the information needs to be submitted by March 7th. So that was something that we, we would need to do with the board if we had some idea, uh, something that we wanted to change. Uh, the resolution subcommittee, of which I'm a member, uh, meets on Saturday, April 8th. After April 8th, if, if uh, you want to make a change to the resolutions, you have to go on emergency resolution. And it's a big long ordeal. Uh, the next delegate assembly uh, is May 20th. Uh, that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Pavlovsky. County Delegate, Mrs. Uh, Sabat? There's going to be a county meeting on Monday, April 8th, and it's going to be well, actually, the Educational Center on uh, Orchard Terrace and I believe it's the 8th of February, February 8th. Ed? Ed. Ed. Uh, the Educational Services Committee, um, subject chair of that one, I'll be going to the meeting next Wednesday. So I'll be reporting next time. Um, ESP for parents. Mrs. Birch. Thank you, Mr. President. We held our parent EST meeting on January 11th at 6.30 p.m. at the board office. We had 12 moms and two dads in attendance. At various times throughout the evening, we had board members that also attended, Mr. Topolski, Mr. Martusi, Mrs. Lamont, Mr. Laura, and myself. Uh, we had representation from schools 1, 2, 6, 8, 9, Seoul, McManus, and the high school. Uh, there were some concerns. We had a parent that was concerned about a scheduling conflict in the middle school between choir and orchestra. Um, if the child was taking choir, they could not take orchestra, orchestra or vice versa. If the child was taking orchestra, they could not take choir. Um, this was actually a scheduling conflict on our part, and we were able to resolve the situation by allowing the students to alternate between the classes. So uh, we we're happy to say that I that was resolved, and I believe the students are very happy. Uh, we had a parent that raised some concerns about uh, race issues in one of the buildings. The situation is being addressed by the building principal. Uh, we're at school six. We were made aware of some issues with the girls' restrooms. Sinks and toilets weren't working. It was brought to maintenance attention, and the situation has been resolved. 
at McManus, it was brought to our attention that there were some seats that had ratings and things engraved on them. Uh, we have made maintenance aware of the issues and it is being addressed. I'd also like you to know that in reviewing some projects, it was brought to our attention that McManus Auditorium is on the list this coming summer to be renovated. Uh, there were some concerns about interim reports coming home with failing marks. But there were no comments on the report cards from the teacher as to why the student was a failing. It's a general rule amongst the administration that if the teacher is to put a failing mark on an interim report, he or she is expected to comment. It's also administration's expectations that if the parent has received the report card and there are failing marks and comments, that this is not the first time that they are being made aware of the situation. That the teacher has already made contact with them and make them aware that the child is in danger of failing. There should be some kind of communication between the parent and teacher before that interim report does come home. Um, there were concerns brought up about pumps only and lunches in the schools. Parents were saying that the children are not being served what's on the menu for that day. Um, so for instance, if it was a meatball sub, they were getting spaghetti and meatballs. Uh, we spoke with Pontoni and they expressed to us that in some cases, yes, it is happening, but the reason it's happening is because maybe the, a delivery wasn't made and they couldn't prepare what was on the menu, or something might have gone bad that they were supposed to prepare that day, so they had to go to an alternate. Um, we're, we want to make sure that the children are getting the best product um, that they have. So, um, with that being said, we are going to um, ask Pontoni to come and speak at one of our future upcoming meetings so that the parents can actually get to speak with them. Uh, there were some concerns about breakfast at the schools. Uh, the parents are saying the children aren't getting enough time to eat their breakfast and they're being rushed. Um, breakfast is um, served in every building, but if you're bringing your child late, you have to understand that they will allow your child to eat. You're going to give them some time to eat. But we also need to make sure that your children are getting to class and starting the day with the rest of their classmates and starting that day on time. So if you're not, not getting their breakfast, it's just that they don't have the full amount of time their breakfast would have been. Um, silent lunches was another concern that was raised, and that was discussed with each building principal, and it's being addressed. Uh, parents asked to have the board meetings as well as the EST meetings on email blast. I know we've been getting those after I've been getting them myself, so I'm very happy for those reminders. Um, school 9 had a concern about a security camera at their front door. It wasn't working properly. And it was hard for them to see who was standing um, at the door. So they are going to be ordering a new camera to replace that camera that's not functioning properly. Uh, there were some other issues and concerns raised by parents. We brought these issues and concerns directly to the superintendent. He is looking into each and every one of the concerns and the issues. Uh, some have been resolved as of today, and others are still being addressed. And um, I would just like to say it was a pleasure to sit down with the parents and have a conversation with them. Please come out and join us for our next parent EST night on Wednesday, February 1st at 6.30 at the board office. We will have many of our parents from other schools and discuss your feedback about our district. We will also be offering a brief presentation in the beginning of our meeting about Genesis and how you as a parent can access it and be able to use it as a great tool to see how your child is doing on a daily basis in school. We'd love to see you there. We will have light refreshments, and that concludes our report. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. All right, um, the next report will be the EST for students at the high school. Ms. Laura. Okay, this morning we had our student EST in attendance with Mr. Olivas, Mr. Montusi, um, Ms. Burge, and myself. We had three sophomores, two juniors, and four seniors, along with their advisors, Mr. Steve and Ms. Lewis. Um, the students had several um, concerns about Montonian. Um, the fries were cold when they ate lunch. That the line was very long, and by the time they get the food, they have to um, stop it down really quickly. Um, they were wondering if there was any way that we might be able to make their lunch periods a little bit longer. But then we informed them that the teachers' lunches were having to change, and everything would just be um, extremely com complicated. Um, they are saying that their bowl cuts um, are getting better on their lunch, uh, on their lunches. Um, and that they're also serving carrots and cucumbers, um, 
with their food, which the students are happy about. They said that the, um, they're now serving chicken and fries in the snack line, which they like too. Um, so if you don't want to have to wait on the long line for hot food, you can go to the snack line and get there. Um, they did have several uh, complaints that some of the workers weren't wearing gloves or hair nets. Um, so we have to speak to Antonio about that. Um, the new uh, TV that were installed in the cafeteria, some students said that uh, they're either not working or they're not on. So they were wondering if there's uh, a way to check on that. Um, there are new chicken wings in the uh, cafeteria, and the students are only given three chicken wings, and they're asking if there's a way to get a bigger portion because they don't sell them off. Um, that's pretty much, oh, there was another um, student who had a concern that their table wasn't being wiped down in the um, eighth period lunch. And they were wondering if one of the students could just uh, wipe the table down just to make sure it's not sticky or anything before they eat their lunch. Um, that's it for the cafeteria. Um, some of the students are having complications with connecting the YouTube at home to a filter or a pop up box or whatever the case may be. And they're also unable to connect to Genesis at home. Um, as far as the building, they said that, to put it very um, simply, that they said that the bathrooms are disgusting, um, and that there's bottles on the floor, there's no mirrors in some of the bathrooms, no trash cans, lock, soap, or paper towels in the front of the locker room. Um, the third floor bathroom they said reeks of smoke, um, so they were wondering if there's any way somebody can walk there and see if there's any. Going on in one of the bathrooms. And then there's also no screens in those windows in the bathroom, so maybe if they were there, they would smoke that up there. They said. Um, they love the repainting in the hallway, the gray. They really like how it looks so far, and they said that they're doing a very good job with that. But they love how the media center is open until 7, um, just to help with study. Um, um, they also like uh, the idea that they're exploring to create more school dances, such as the Valentine's Day over there. Um, and they also are looking into creating a path out in the spring swimming teams and the plays and just everything that goes on in the spring because those um, spring activities are sometimes forgotten. The students that are involved in the uh, musicals are requesting if there's any type of recognition that they might be able to get because they feel like they're not recognized at all for being a part of the play and it does take a lot of hours that they go um, to making the play a uh, reality. Um, and our next meeting for the student EST will be held on Thursday, February 16th in the Lynn High School Media Center at, I believe, one o'clock. Um, and I think everybody who was there came there with concerns, 
hopefully left with some answers. So it was a productive evening. And, um, you know, I, I would highly recommend the next time to have that. Um, anybody who has any students who might be in the special ed program or not to come to this because um, there are interesting things that you can find out and, and things that you can help your children with as well. So that pretty well concludes that. All right. Yeah. 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 All right, just fine. And then finish business. Thank you. 